Howdy everybody, this is Steve, KM9, well, that, that doesn't say KM9G, but you know who I am by now. What better way to test out a new antenna than parks on the air? Let's get to it. Today's antenna of choice is a Pacific Antenna or QRPKits.com Pack 12, and it comes with all of these wonderful pieces here. <laughs> you won't be able to get this anymore. This is a, a used antenna that I got out of an estate sale. And it's supposed to be a 40 meter coil that's good for 100 watts. And that's some pretty thick enamel wire on what looks like a one inch EMT or electrical conduit with some custom fittings on it. Let me get this thing set up. The bottom is the spiky bit. The spiky bit goes into the part where you screw your coax in. So let's get that thing screwed in. And then we need the extensions to get us up to our coil. So it's got a screw tip on one end and a screw tip on the other end. Screw that in. And we've got a union and a screw tip. Let's screw that in. So spiky bit, antenna bit, union bit, top bit, and now coily bit. The coil can go on either direction. It kind of doesn't matter. It's just a, it's a lump of wire followed by the whip bit. The whip, whip, whip bit. All right, so that's on, and then we just spike it into the ground. Let's go do that. As a ham, you start collecting things. And if you guys remember my frozen lake uh, antenna testing day that I went out and played with, these are the counterpoise wires off of the Buddy Stick TO that I did, this video right here. And I've got those connected up through some Anderson power poles. This is probably one of the only times you can get away with Marion red to black like that. And a nice length of wire going off in a couple of different directions. And I made it bright yellow for some high visibility type stuff. So I've got four radials. If you're the instruction manual reading type, you might have read the instructions and it'll tell you you want to have about eight radials of about eight feet if they're on the ground. And if it's elevated, you want to have them uh, quarter wave cut so that you can get a better resonant match. I'm not the reading type. I just put some radials on the ground. We're gonna see how well this works. I also talked to the guys that made the antenna and they said that it doesn't matter as long as you have some wire that's right on the ground. It doesn't matter what length it is. And that's true for all ground radial systems. If it's right on the ground, you're creating a reflection base, not a resonant part of your antenna. So it doesn't really matter what size they are. If you wanna split hairs, I think these are the 10 foot each ones. But didn't bring any tape measurements because I don't want to measure, I want to have fun, I want to play. Let's get the Nano VNA hooked up to this thing and see what kind of magic this antenna does. It's supposed to be a 40 meter antenna. Let's take a look. All right, we are all plugged in. Let's turn it on for the first time together and see what this thing looks like. It looks like we're gonna to need to zoom in. Boom, zoom in. All right, let's see. That's about as best as I can do about the glare because I am currently outside. Let's do recall zero. We've now recalled our saved calibration, so we don't need to do that. And let's do stimulus start. And we're gonna start at seven megahertz. And we're gonna run until 7.4 megahertz, which is gonna give us more than the 40 meter band. And this is a 40 meter antenna, so that should do pretty good. All right, so my SWR and my Smith chart, my Smith chart looks pretty good. My SWR does not look good at all. We're at 6.2 at 7.4. Let's move down the band, 6.2. So I'm looking at this number right up here, 6.3, 6.4. Okay, so there's a little bit of a dip there, but not much. 6.36. So it looks like it looks like our best frequency is going to be 7200. Fantastic. At 6.35, we should be able to tune that with a tuner. Uh, let's take a look at the antenna and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on here. Okay, so remember that thing I said about reading the owner's manual? Nah, we're not going to do that. Uh, actually, I went back and I did read the owner's manual and what I found out is that it is 
upside down. It was upside down. So if you look, the SWR is now two to one. That's a heck of a lot better than it used to be. Let's go take a look at the antenna and I'll show you what happened. Okay, so this little piece down here actually has a direction that it goes in and I had it in completely upside down. Don't tell Chuck. Let's go around and look at the other side of it and we can tell how we figured that out. Center conductor goes up to this lead, which then goes up the antenna. The ground lug goes down to this lead, which then goes into the ground and also connects back here to where my ground radials are connected. So what I was doing was I was shoving the signal out of the ground radials and using the vertical as a counterpoise instead of shoving the signal out of the vertical and using the ground radials as a counterpoise. That could be kind of a problem. One of the other things that I noticed while I was doing this is that all of the screws that hold this thing together were all loose. I guess they just came loose over time. So I tightened all of those down and that also gained me a lot more electrical connection, electrical conductivity. So always check all your connections which is what I was gonna do with the multimeter anyway. The radio of choice for today is the Yezu FT891, and this is in the Denco battery case. So we've got nine amp hours of power and 100 watts worth of output. Let's get this thing plugged in. As you saw with the antenna, we're gonna need a tuner. So I've got one of those too. All right, so I told you I brought a tuner, the LDG Z100 Plus tuner. Made it up to the Yezu FT891. Our initial check is that SWR is off the charts. So I've put it into ready mode, key down, run the tuner. And we're better, 1.7-ish, I guess. All right, we got a little bit better that time. We got down to like 1.6. All right, that's close enough to get us going. I'm gonna get this park activated. Oh man, we got some chicken scratch in the logs there, but we made it happen. So the old FT891 got it done. The Pac-12 needs some help. And also 40 meters needs some help today. I think it's more 40 meters than it is the Pac-12. I'm gonna do some more work on the Pac-12. We're gonna revisit it in a future video. Be sure to stay tuned to the channel for that because it does, it does the thing, it works, it's tunable but it should be resonant. We're gonna figure that out. Either way, there's a video right over here on top of my face I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.